I think with Sundance, we all came together for this one thing, right? But nobody knew each other. And that, that was cool because I wasn't my kid's mom. I was Mallory in that moment. And I had never, I hadn't been Mallory in so long. And, and so when it was like, okay, tell us about you. I'm like, uh, <laughs> again, I was stuck with like, I'm a mom and I don't know why I, I'm here. Cause I needed some space. I don't Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? All right. Hi, Mallory. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. (laughs) I'm so excited to have you here. I know you've been up to a lot of things lately, (laughs) life, healing, growth, and just a lot in general. And before we get into the super juicy part, do you want to introduce yourself to us? Who is Mallory? (laughs) Oh my goodness. Um, That's a weird one for me because it's weird for me to talk about myself. Um, I always start out with saying I'm a mom of four boys and then people are like, oh my gosh, bless your soul. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's what I said the first time I met you. I'm like, whoa. (laughs) So that, I mean, I feel like that's who I am because I've been a mom longer than I was a kid, right? And um, I'm just a person trying to do her best in life, I guess. (laughs) I like to help people um, and grow and learn and, you know, I don't. I don't know what else. <laughs> I know it is a big question. Like whenever somebody asks me, who are you? I'm like, what do you mean? What do I tell you? Yeah. <laughs> you're also, I know you just got your real estate license and yes. you're also a culinary nutrition expert. I want to dive into that as well. And you also have a latest book coming out called The Fart yes. That Lied. <laughs> yes, yes. And that one, I feel very... Um, Oh, what's the word? I feel like I am qualified for that job because of the four boys. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Ooh, how about we start there? How did the book come to be? Oh my goodness. Okay. So it was the year that we did um, Sundance. It was the, the, the January before that. Um, mm-hmm. My whole family was sick and I was taking care of everybody. So my boys, my husband, everybody was sick. And one of my boys, and I'm not going to shout him out, I'm not going <laughs> to call, call anyone out, <laughs> but one of them had an accident and I asked him about it and he's like, no, no, no. I said, well, I kind of saw it, you know, like, it's okay. It's not a big deal, but we've got to clean it up. And, and if it happens, let me know right away so I can take care of it. You know, we can take care of it. And he's like, okay, but don't tell brother, you know, the other brother. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. Don't worry. And then it kept happening. And then older brother calls me up in the middle of the night. Mom, I think I, I think I had an accident. And then he's, you know, we cleaned it up. Not a big deal. And then he's like, don't tell your brother. <laughs> and, oh my gosh. I'm not going to say anything. But just so you know, it happens to everybody. Like everybody is, everybody in the world has done that. And if they say they haven't, they're lying. I promise. Yes. <laughs> everybody has. And And it got to the point where it was just too much. Like it was happening every day from everybody. And, and I, I was like, you guys, I'm not going to keep it a secret anymore. You've all pooped your pants. You need to go sit down on the toilet. If you need to fart because your farts are lying to you. (laughs) And then I went to bed and I, I I couldn't sleep because I had this rhyme in my head and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to get this out. And so it's kind of been a three year in the making process. Yeah. Because I knew, I knew whoever illustrated this book needed to have a good sense of humor because it is not for everyone, (laughs) even though it's happened to everyone. It's not for everyone (laughs) because people don't talk about it. You know, they're really, it's embarrassing. It's so embarrassing 
especially in the moment. I mean, later on down the years, when you're, if somebody's telling you about it, you know, they, they can finally laugh. And that's kind of what happened when I told people yeah. that I have this book and then they'd say, oh my gosh, this one time. And they would tell right. me the story. <laughs> yes. It was so funny. And, and I'm like this, I got to get this out there. I got to, if anything, I've got to show my kids that you can have this idea mm-hmm. and you don't need to be an expert. I've never written a book before, but I knew I needed to, to do this, to show my kids like to, that you can do it. You know, you don't have to be an expert to just do it. Yeah. yeah and also yeah. to normalize something that happens to everyone every day (laughs) yes and nobody wants to talk about it because it's so embarrassing but it's also so human and to also like embody that part to your kids as well giving them the courage like okay I know it's embarrassing but (laughs) and to ask for help because he my you know what my son was so embarrassed that he just he hit it right so if you can imagine <laughs> when you find that it's like oh I wish he would have just sold me he was so embarrassed to tell me of all people yeah. um yeah so we we tell each other now <laughs> it's yeah. a very open topic <laughs> <laughs> but it also models to them I think like later on it's such a good metaphor for life where so many things happen to us and we're so ashamed and we think that people might judge us for yes. it yes when in reality everybody goes everybody. through similar yeah. things they make mistakes and you just have to clean it up and yeah. keep moving forward right learn your lesson it's a lesson learned it's embarrassing but it's okay <laughs> oh I'm so excited to read it I've ordered it already so I'm like awesome. when it launches <laughs> so how old are your boys so my oldest is 19 and a half and then I have uh, 15 11 and 7 oh my gosh it's fun ages you're Seven is preteen or is a teen already? Preteen. Seven? Um, no, he's just little. <laughs> he's just little. <laughs> he's just little. I would say preteen would maybe be 11 and 12. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, because I'm like, <laughs> since I don't have kids yet, I'm like, there is baby, toddler, and then what happens? <laughs> He's still at an age where he adores me and he just, he loves his mommy so much. So you're like, let's <laughs> whatever <it>. that stage <laughs> is. <laughs> so I know with your youngest one, you also talked a little bit about your journey, getting into food allergies and becoming a culinary nutrition expert. How was that journey yeah, in so, itself? I mean, years ago I had issues with food and eating disorder so it's always been kind of something that I've always wanted to get into um through my own healing but when he was about one he had a severe reaction to dairy um and I'd never seen hives in my life before I'd never experienced food allergies I always thought that the moms of the peanut allergy kids were so you know just overprotective and 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 I just was very ignorant I had no idea and you know then we he got diagnosed with much more allergies and I just I remember sitting on the kitchen floor holding him and crying because I didn't know what to do I didn't know how to feed him I I knew that I would do whatever it took to find out how to prepare foods for him and make him feel included because I was concerned about him going to school and birthday parties and And I remember my mom saying, you should find a community out there of allergy parents. And I'm just like, ugh, mom, you don't know what you're talking about. But she was so right because, you know, I I started on Instagram and found there are so many other people going through the exact same thing. And I found Kathleen, the allergy chef. And she was, I I geeked out when I met her. Um, She was doing like a I don't remember what it was called, but she was kind of going around um, different states and showing how to um, navigate food allergies. And I, mm-hmm. I knew she was in my town, so I drove down to see her. And and really, we've become good friends ever since. She was um, she just helped me feel she the, there was such empathy and sympathy because she suffers from food allergies as well, and so she just understood what he was going through and it helped me kind of put my myself in Cameron's shoes right it helped me put my feet in his shoes because he was so little he couldn't communicate things with me but mm-hmm. but to realize like oh he's acting that way because something I just gave him is causing him to feel not well and 
I wasn't getting much help with his pediatrician. She kind of denied some of the severity of his food allergies. And so kind of working with a nutritionist or not a nutritionist, sorry, his allergist. And then me just finding out, um, doing the research myself and not to say that you should do that, but I needed to, because I didn't know what else to do. Um, I wasn't getting the support I needed, but yeah, through the, through the community, through Instagram, other moms sharing what they know and, and just kind of coming together. And it's a beautiful community. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I've met a so lot of supportive. Yeah. Yes. I've, I've, um, I have a lot of like now friends because of this community and that's how we've gotten to know each other. Oh my gosh. It's so important, especially with my sister. She also has allergies growing up. Yeah. And I think back in the time for my mom, she really had to figure out by herself. She didn't speak the language. We were moving between Canada and Peru. So there was no way to find a community. And doctors, a lot of them deny it, say like, she'll grow out of it. It's fine. And then not getting a proper diagnosis. It's really in the parents' heads. Like, what do we do? How do we become an advocate for our kid and make sure that they're safe, especially if it's not something that's common, then schools won't prepare for it. We've had so many incidents where a friend ate some chocolate or dairy, hugged her, touched her, and then she broke out in hives, you know, because people are not aware of that. And just, it feels so overwhelming and lonely. Yeah. Yeah. It did at first. It really did at first until I found this community and, and, you know, they would help you you'd find out information on how to navigate school because that was a huge fear. I imagine him sitting at the table all by himself, somebody, you know, spilling milk or, you know, maybe sesame got into something. And But his school has been amazing. They they have a meeting with, at the beginning of the year, they go over his health plan. We have staff that comes in and cleans his little space every single day. He told me just this morning, he's like, Miss Danny cleans my space six times before I eat. And i I'm so great. I don't ever want to leave that, that school because they've been so good. Yeah. 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 Oh, that is so validating to, to see someone acknowledge your concern. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What are some, I guess, because we're talking about allergies and trying to spread a bit more awareness, what are some ways, and because everybody is different that you've noticed that are helpful when they are going through, I guess, a reaction or when they are reacting to something at the moment? Yeah, we have to stay calm because if he sees that I'm scared, he's going to get scared. And thankfully, we've only had uh, one super severe reaction. Um, And I'm so thankful that I trusted my instincts on this one. We live really close to the hospital, which with four ways, that's a blessing in itself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't gone down there more often. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> I know. Um, but he was having this reaction and, you know, we were kind of going back and forth. Should we give him the EpiPen? We had, I didn't know. I was scared. I was scared to give him the EpiPen. And my husband was saying, no, oh, let's just keep an eye on him. But he kind of became unresponsive. And I, I just, I rushed him to the hospital and he was completely purple and shaking. I mean, it was very terrifying. So I always go back to that moment um, when I notice he has a hive and and I tell him, hey, I, you know, I don't know what you just had, but you have a hive right here. We're going to keep an eye on it. Um, Let me give you some medicine. If it gets worse, we're probably going to take you to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, okay, you know, he's very used to this now. And anytime we try a new food, um, I check all this, all the spots and I ask him how his breathing is. And um, he's just, he's used to it. He's like, I know we're going to keep an eye on it. (laughs) So he's, and he'll come up at like, you know, every 20 minutes and I'll check in and he's really good about it. He's really good about reminding his brothers, you just had, you know, egg or dairy, go wash your hands before you're near me. And he's that way with school too. You know, he, he's cautious. If he sees spilled milk, he'll go tell somebody that that it needs to be cleaned up and not in a, you know, he's not a bossy boy anyway. He's just like, (laughs) I could get sick. <laughs> right, right, right. And helping him advocate for himself as well. That's so yes. powerful. Yes. Is, um, you know, there'll, there'll be times at school where the teacher will accidentally hand him something and he'll just look at it and he'll look at his teacher and he'll say, I actually can't have that one. <laughs> oh, so yeah. he's aware, you know, and, and we always prepare. So, you know, there was one day where he, he's, he kind of, 
he kind of felt sorry for himself. He was like, it's not fair that I have food allergies. And I said, well, maybe not, but you have both your legs, you have both your arms, you can see out of both of your eyes, your hearing is great, you can run really fast, your lungs are healthy. I'd say you're doing pretty good. And everybody has something. And so, okay, you have food allergies and it limits some things, but can look at all the things you can actually eat. You, you can eat a lot of things. And he's like, yeah, you're right. And then, you know, he goes off and I'm like, but it really sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you're it like, does. oh, <laughs> yeah. Especially because when you found out about it, you there's also, I guess, a bit of grief of, oh, all the things that will be a bit more challenging for him. Yes, yes you know, traveling is one thing because you have to bring a lot of the food or or know which which places you can eat at and make sure the where you go has those places. But I have a friend, she's got three daughters and then her husband and her, they all have different food allergies and they travel to Hawaii, like, you know, they make it happen. So when I found out she could do it, I'm like, oh, if she can do it with her entire family, I can do it with one kid. So That's another way that this community is so amazing because you see one person and then they give you tips on how to, how they've navigated it. And it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And you inspire each other. And I love like the theme or the thread that is coming. It's just like, talk about things and you'll find people who can support each other. Yes, absolutely. Mm, I know you've shared a lot about your kids and I'm curious about you. How was it, I guess, for you, motherhood or you know, what the journey you've been through in the last couple of years? Yeah. (laughs) Well, I feel like these last, this last few years, um, actually kind of started with sundance because I had never in my life or never in my, since having kids, I'd never been by myself. So at the time my son was 16, never had I traveled by myself. I'd never been away from my kids for so long. And even though it was like an hour away from my house, I remember (laughs) going to the grocery store even. And I'm like, I don't know how to grocery shop for one person. Mm. I didn't know. I I get to pick what I want. I don't even know what I want. (laughs) I I grabbed a rotisserie chicken and I grabbed a bag of lettuce, like salad mix. And I'm like, this will (laughs) do for the whole week. I don't know. (laughs) Little did I know that if you don't eat the chicken, like within a certain time, it's going to go rancid. And that's exactly what happened. Cause I, normally it's gone within a day or two. Right. Yeah. So after, after that, that was such an experience. I came home and I was so, I just felt so calm. And like, I had found myself up in those mountains and, and it was beautiful. And I realized like, gosh, I love myself, you know, like I need to do things for myself. Cause I, I start crying. Cause I had, I never, I had never done that before. Um, and so then the next year I decided I'm finally going to get my, I'm going to go take the culinary nutrition course that I've been dreaming about for years. I'm going to do it. And I did it. And then the following year, um, I did, I decided to get my real estate license. Like I'm going to do it. So I got my real estate license. And then it was this year where I'm like, you know what, this book is getting done. Like each year I just, I want to mark, I want to, you know, put a mark through all these goals. I have so many things I want to do and I, I deserve to get to do it. Right. Like yeah. my kids are getting older. I have a little bit more time now and I'm, I'm worthy to have goals accomplished. And that happened through Sundance, as silly as it is. Wow. <laughs> silly Sundance as it was, it was, I feel like it was such a magical and such a cathartic experience for so many people to come back to themselves through the means of like through yoga. And yeah, I think sometimes we forget, especially I can imagine being a mother of four boys, your time is devoted to them because they all need a little piece of your attention in every different ways because they're in different de- developmental stages. Is that how you yes, say it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and I think with Sundance, we all came together for this one thing, right? But nobody knew each other. And that that was cool because I wasn't my kid's mom. I was Mallory in that moment. And I had never, I hadn't been Mallory in so long. And, and so when it was like, okay, tell us about you. I'm like, uh, (laughs) again, I was stuck with it. I'm a mom and I don't know why I'm here because I needed some space. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Yeah, What pulled you into Sundance? Um, 
Oh my goodness. Cause I love Tara. And when I found out she had moved to Utah, I was like, Oh my gosh, I hope one day I get to meet her. I love her so much. And, um, she did a free yoga class. It was in June, just a few days before my birthday. And I knew I needed to go there mm-hmm. and I did the class and it was beautiful. And, and I knew that I needed to go talk to her, even if that, like, I hadn't even planned to do the, I, I wanted to do the training, but I was, you know, finances and everything. It was just, it, I didn't think I could make it happen. And so right after class, I walked up to her, I had my, my cloud pants, you know, those Reebok cloud pants and I, yeah. <laughs> and I met her and I talked to her and I'm just like, oh my gosh, she is a person. Like she's so normal. <laughs> she's so nice. And I was so, you know, had been so nervous, but she's, she just has this um, ease about her that makes you feel comfortable to be her friend. And um, we talked about the training and I'm like, well, you know, I I would love to, but it's kind of, you know, I got kids and it's hard and she's like, oh, just email us. We'll figure it out. And I was, oh my gosh, this is really going to happen. So yeah. And yeah, I, I was for, I was like, floating on cloud nine after that. And I was like, I just met Tara. <laughs> yeah, she has that effect. The first time I met her, I think I couldn't even get words out of my mouth, but she was approachable. But I was just like, like YouTube to now you're real person. <laughs> you're approachable. What does that mean? No, I had to keep saying like, you're talking to Tara, just act normal, look normal, just be yeah. relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> what does normal even mean it's almost like our time I was like ah. <laughs> so ever since Sundance you started to come back more to yourself and get on this I guess realize that you could carve out more space to for yourself yeah yeah that I'm worthy for that you know because I think I think you lose yourself in motherhood sometimes or or it's easy to lose yourself because you're you're taking your kids to, you know, you pack in lunches, you're taking them to school, you're taking them to sports, and then you're, you got to cook dinner, you got to do this. And I had been a, a, been a stay at home mom for ever since my second was born. And um, I didn't know, I didn't know how to not be a, a yeah. stay at home mom, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's been an adjustment for my kids. I remember when I was doing uh, the real estate course, and one of my boys was like, well, I expect my pants to be folded in my drawer when I get out of bed in the morning. And I'm like, guess what? You just signed yourself up for laundry. Right. That is <laughs> they so were, funny. Yeah, they've been so used to me doing everything for them. And I've kind of had to let them some things go because I can't do it all. And I know that. And I'm not going to hold the guilt of, of not being able to do everything every mm-hmm. single day. You know, some days I get a lot done and some days I just kind of hang out in bed you know like yeah. I can't do everything and then that's okay yeah and like I guess it's even for me hearing that over and over again from different mothers like it's so validating because I've seen my own mother and their culture of like trying to do everything the one who keeps the glue of the house but then they're not there it's almost like mom what are your passions what do you like oh I like what you like okay, I know you love me. And I think like you said, it's so easy to get lost in that because you're so devoted and loving to the people you're caring for. And just knowing that it's okay. It's okay that you can't do everything. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're any less of a mother or human being. Yeah. And it takes a while to let that guilt go sometimes. At least it did for me. I held a lot of guilt for all the things. If I, I felt like I wasn't enough, if I didn't pay enough attention or I didn't you know, cook the best meal that night or something, every little thing, if they were upset about their, their pants not being folded and put in their dresser, yeah. like I held on to the guilt of all of that, you know, I was right. thinking, well, maybe I need to get up earlier and I need to do, no, I don't, I need to actually assign them some more chores and I need to just right. take some more time for myself because I think that me showing myself love is a good example on them yeah. and letting, yeah. you know, showing them that I get up and I will, you know, take time to not every day. And I, there's times where I'm better about it, but waking up, doing meditation, having quiet time, going on a walk, they see me do these things. And, and I see them do these things sometimes Mm. as well. So that's, that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because I feel like the guilt is 
so conditioned to us women in every yes. messaging in movies and books in the way that it was modeled and thank you for like talking about the transition between kind of like coming back to myself okay I know I need to do these things but the next following weeks or months are not necessarily going to be easy because it's almost like you're so used to it now that's like how do I set boundaries because you know a couple of years ago maybe for me like boundaries became such a hot topic but setting them is not as easy as just saying no right it takes um relearning habits because I and I'm still learning that I have to uh, just have new habits of um our routine you know and and dad can get you something too <laughs> you go ask your dad because you have both parents in this house and right. <laughs> and he's he's available I am not <laughs> yeah 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 was it does it become easier the more you practice and then less guilt that it's just like oh yeah I don't feel bad for saying no anymore yes yes it and it's been take it's taken some time but I it has been easier to uh delegate to my husband to go, you know, I need you to pick up the kids because I have this thing going on. And I, and I would feel kind of bad if I wasn't there to see them after school. And, and sometimes they would, you know, well, you did, I didn't get to see you after school. I was like this, but you got to see dad and that's cool too. You get to tell dad about your day. And mm. yeah, the more you do it, the less guilt and, and it's good for them to have other people in their lives do these things or learn how to do them themselves. It helps them be more independent. And yeah. that's not a bad thing. Yeah. How has the adjustment been for your family? Have they noticed like how you are now? Like, have they noticed? Yeah. Like, how is mom doing now? Yeah. My, my seven-year-old will ask me about every week since my surgery, he'll say, how are you feeling mom? Oh. <laughs> so he genuinely wants to know how I'm feeling really because he wants to give me a really big hug. I really oh, tight one without hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, they, they're proud of me. I can see it. I can see, you know, when they, when they held the book for the first time and they saw, cause they helped me with the characters. They helped me decide who, what character is going to be what. And so they're proud of themselves. They're proud of me. They're proud of um, I think they're proud to see me accomplish this goal, you know, and, yeah. and I'll be getting ready for an open house. And one, one of my boys, he told me the other day, mom, you look like a real estate agent. And I'm like, great. <laughs> that's what I'm going for. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, they see, they can tell I'm calmer and happier and, um, yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about real estate. <laughs> that's been fun. Yeah. Um, so my, she's my mentor now, um, but she's been my friend for years. Our kids used to do jujitsu together. And I remember her getting her, her real estate license and I'm me thinking like, wow, that's cool. You know, like yeah. good for her. And, um, I would always, I would have run into her usually at target. I would see her and we'd talk <laughs> about real estate. And then she called me one day and she said, you know, I think, I think you would be a good fit for our team. Do you want to come in and do, it's called a transaction coordinator where they do um, the paperwork. And I said, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'd love to help you. That'd be fun. And, and then it just made sense to get my license, you know? So I, I said, you know, I think I'm ready. I'm going to get my, my license. And, you know, the, the youngest is in school full-time soon. And I just think it would be, it would be fun. I like helping people. It makes sense. I'm really honest. I feel like is I, I spoke to somebody the other day and they asked me about my approach of being a real estate agent. And I said, oh, I'm not salesy. I'm not going to sell you something. I'm not going to try to get more money out of you. It's I, I'm going to be like the mom of real estate. I'm going to make right. sure everybody has what they need. Do you need a snack? Are you hungry? <laughs> yeah. And and just be honest and make sure people don't argue, you know, like try to keep it very um, centered and relaxed and yeah, so I think that's what I bring to real Ooh. estate, really. <laughs> do you do you have any places in Toronto? <laughs> Can you come to Toronto? Because, <laughs> yeah, there is so much pressure in finding a house or a place. And then there's always stress when I hear about people who are finding homes. They're, like, fighting for a bidding or, like, finding the right spot. And then I've known real estate agents who are like I've shown you two places how come you don't like any of them like you know some of them get really mad you're like well I just I'm sorry but I don't like any place and then you know being able to bring this approach kind of like the ease the strala yoga ease yes. into real estate basically that's yes. what you're doing 
Yeah, because buying a home is a huge investment. Like that's your, it's and it's scary your first time. Um, we're still in our first home that we bought and it was terrifying. And I actually, the agent who helped us get the home was a friend of mine and she was just fun. Like we would go hang out um, go look at houses, you know, and just, it, it was fun. And I, I love that. And yeah, I think it's fun. I'm, I'm pretty, um, patient when it comes to this stuff. And I think that I mean, experience with my kids, right? <laughs> I was going to say you have like four boys. <laughs> I'm learning patience day by day. <laughs> Some days I have more than others, but <laughs> yeah, like everyone, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. What is your favorite part about helping people find their, I don't want to say forever because that is like forever home, but you know, a permanent, a home. Yeah. I, I feel like just to know that, I mean, yes, it's a huge investment and it's a transaction and it's big, but you have other options, right? You don't have to stay in that home forever. You can move. You don't, it's not, so is where it is like kind of semi-permanent thing. It doesn't have to be, right? You know, and 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 being able to, I mean, because with the house that we bought, we bought a very old home and being able to kind of change things and make it our own and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's fun. I find it fun. I like it. I like a challenge. I like to see these old homes be restored. And um, I think I, I uh, missed your question there. <laughs> no, you did it. You did it. <laughs> you answered it in your way of like the fun thing about being able to make your home yours and also detach from it <laughs> because yes. it's not forever. Because I think there's a lot of assumptions on what real estate is or what being a home is and I feel like you by answering these questions you're already debunking a few things yeah. <laughs> have you sold your first home yes oh yes. my gosh congratulations it was awesome. yes yeah. it was fun I had so much fun doing it and you get to meet a lot of different people right and make these connections and and it was so much fun I was um there's been a couple times where I've been uh in an open house though and I I call my mentor. I'm like, will you please hurry up? This house freaks me out. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to be here by myself. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not to, it's only happened once, but it's for the most part, you know, you feel pretty safe and you feel, um, yeah, I, I'm not too worried. They're daytime things. Yeah, yeah. Like alone in the dark at night. Or like I was, now I, I'm like, I'm going to a tangent. I'm like, are there haunted houses that are known? <laughs> I don't know. It would be kind of fun, kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, fun and scary. I'm like, do you want to, some people love that, like buying yeah. a place like that. <laughs> I am not one of those people. I, I like to hear about it. <laughs> yes, the same. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you recently you mentioned a little bit earlier about your your surgery that was also a whole other <laughs> journey as well yeah so 14 years ago I got breast implants because I felt pressure and I felt not good enough and felt you know that this would just be the best thing ever right and they were fine. It was fine at first, many years. Like I, I didn't have any issues. And then I started noticing probably four or five years into it that just mm -hmm. things started shifting. I got, I was getting really bad anxiety and I, I'm already a little bit anxious, but it was really a kind of a lot. And then, you know, depression hits and other little things like just body inflammation and skin issues, dry hair, dry skin. Um, I have a whole list of different things that I, I experienced. Yeah. And this year I, I knew it was time I had read other people, other women's stories, because I thought that this was kind of all in my head, right? I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't think that I was that person. And I had had people tell me before, maybe it's your implants that you're going to know. And even if it is, you know what, I'm not going to get them removed because how could I live without them? I don't, I, I, I have nothing. I have no, I have no breast tissue. How can I, you know, I won't feel attractive. I won't feel like a woman, right. That's what I was thinking. And, and after I had just this year had been, I was so exhausted. I was so in this, in this dark place, you know, here I am with my kids and my husband, I have nothing to really be 
depressed about and I, my thoughts were dark. I did, I, I, I knew and reading these other women's um, stories that it had to be these implants, these foreign objects in my body that had been sitting here for, for this long, like they needed to come out. Um, I just, I knew it in my gut that they needed to come out. Mm. And, and I made the appointment quick and I got in and I got them out. And I, the very day that I came home from the hospital, I, not, I thought, am I, am I imagining this? I looked in the mirror and the, the whites of my eyes were so clear. Um, and I knew, I mean, I got chills when I looked at myself and I asked everybody, do my eyes look brighter? And, and my husband's yeah. like, actually, they really do. That's crazy. Wow. I said, I, I knew it was the best decision for me. It was like these clouds were moving away. I was seeing the sunshine for the first time um, and coming back to who I am, who, who I am, who I was in at Strava, right? Like who I, mm -hmm. I was coming home to myself. I felt hope. Um, and it's still a process, you know, sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm, I just kind of, well, whatever it is, what it is, you know, whatever, <laughs> but I, I can kind of laugh about it now as, whereas before, you know, maybe two, three years ago, I wouldn't have been okay with it. Um, so it's, you know, this process, I think I had to get really sick in order mm -hmm. to appreciate my body and appreciate what it's been doing for me this whole time. It's been fighting to try to keep mm -hmm. me going and and I had to go through these things. I had to get the implants. I had to get not feel well. I had to feel these things in order to feel better right now. And, and accepting of my body, you know, wow, our bodies are freaking amazing. And they, they just want you to be okay, right? They're not trying to attack you. <laughs> They're trying to let you live. And yeah. Oh, wow. And in a way, I love how you said, you know, I had to go through all these things because I, I think we talked about it briefly. You making the decision to get them it was perhaps the right thing right there for you. Mm -hmm. And now the decision to remove it, it's the right thing now. And I, you know, sometimes people go around, it's like, I shouldn't have done this. I did this to myself. But sometimes our process of coming home is never linear. It's a yeah. series of things, you know, Strala might've been one of the many different um, stepping points to get to where you are right now, to where you're like able to choose more of like what feels more me. And it's, never clear and it's also hard to directly link the correlation that implants are going to Im impact the way you feel or your moods because you know there are many studies that says it doesn't and then people are starting to share that oh actually it is impacting me yeah yeah and the more you look into um, other women having these symptoms you start to you like well how did it all begin and you start watching, you know, these, the beginning of, of breast implants. And I, yeah. I saw this video and it's talking about one of the first implants they put in a dog, the dog didn't die. So then they started implanting in women. And I'm just like, oh my God, wow. there's so many women that have had so many issues. And, and now I'm so grateful that it is being talked about because I was told that they're 100% safe. They are lifetime. <laughs> And that's just right. not the case. You, I mean, every 10 years, you're supposed to get new ones. I mean, that's really invasive to your body, you know, right. and, and, and where I, I don't, I don't regret it. And I don't think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. No, I should have done it at the time. But I, the only thing I wish is that I would have loved myself enough to know that that doesn't change me. That's the only thing that I really wish I, I could have loved myself enough to know that I'm not my breast. That's so silly. You know, it's, it's silly. Yeah. It, it seems like in hindsight, but in the moment, yes. you know, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is going to fix everything and I'm going to feel comfortable. And I did, I was never one that like, I, I, I always still covered them up. I felt actually kind of insecure with it because I felt like they were too big for my body frame. And I remember when I very first started doing yoga, not strala, but just yoga in general, I was in a class and I was in this position and I was kind of meditating. And I had this thought that you are not going to feel whole until you get these removed. You are not really? going to be who you are meant to be until they're taken out. And I pushed that thought down so deep. Right. <laughs> I did not want to believe it, but it had been there for so long. Wow. Yeah. You also talk about, you speak to the part of us, kind of like our intuition voices that we hear that it's almost like moments of like, okay, 
you need to go somewhere else, like nudge you into the other direction. But you're like, but I've had my mindset on this. Like, what do you mean? Like, there's nothing wrong. Like, why are you trying to add problems? Because it's very, it's de- destabilizing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I didn't want to listen to that voice. And then it wasn't until this year and it was so strong and it was like, you are, this is going to take you down a really dark path if you do not get your health in order. Cause I was doing everything by the book. I was everything a doctor would tell you to do drinking your water, drink that, uh, eating really well, exercising, meditating, going into nature. I was doing everything for a very long time. And I was still feeling this really dark shadow and And I don't want to be dramatic in saying this, but I mean, suicidal thoughts, this was not okay. And it's even hard to like admit that because it's almost, but I think it's important. I think it's important to talk about because I felt alone in that. And I didn't, I don't, I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to, I mean, I, how could I, how could I do that to my, my family? You know, Mm -hmm. they need me as best as in, in my best form, you know, they need me. I know this. And yeah, I had to listen to that voice. Mm. And thank you for sharing this because again, I I learned through people's stories and courage of sharing their own thought process because it's not easy when yeah. you hear things like, oh, I need to do this now. What does it mean? What it changes things and just sharing helps people feel less alone. Yeah. And it was, I think what was kind of, I was like, this is so expensive. We don't have the money for this. And then I had to shift my thinking, like, no, we have the money. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. And, and everything fell into place to where the money was there. You know, it all kind of worked out in the right, perfect timing to, to do what needed to happen. So if ever there's an issue where it's like, well, I don't have the money for this. Well, if you keep thinking that, then you might not have the money, but if you know, in your heart, like, if this needs to happen, you will find a way, something will happen and you will be able to get the money, whether you need to make the payments or you need to do this, it will happen. So yeah. to, if anybody listens to this and they're worried about, you know, don't not having enough money to get their implants taken out or whatever health concern that they have, just do it. The money, you will find a way, something yeah. will happen. Yeah. Especially oh, like, this is such an important point, because when we choose ourselves, it might, and we're, if we're not used to it, it might feel like there's more to lose, or there feels like there's more challenges when we're choosing ourselves. If we haven't been doing so for a while, it feels very scary, but things will fall into place. And it sounds very kind of like, you know, the universe has your back and it's, it's true. It sounds cheesy, but there's also people around you that you can lean on. There's more options than what we see in our minds because I know that when our minds go to a dark place it just wants to stay and spiral there it's not the easiest or more most pleasant place to be and that's when we need the most support from others yeah absolutely and you know I did have family members say that you know if some if you if you can't if you don't have the money you know I'll help you out and and I'm I'm like nope not gonna borrow any money we are gonna figure it out and it yeah it all just worked out and oh there was something I was just gonna say and then I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> it will come back. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> oh, now I remember. Okay. So there was even a guilt of spending that, that money on myself, you know, like, and, and then what if I get them out and I still feel really awful. So there was validation in that, that day that when I saw the right. clear in my eyes, like, oh, this was the best decision I could have made for myself and for my family. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. How how do you feel now ever since? How long has it been? Close to a month, three weeks? Uh, yeah, almost seven weeks now. Mm. Um, and I'm I feel I've been so gentle on myself. It's hard for me not to work out because I would work out every day and just do stuff, but it started, you know, I could I could walk and I could do squats and that kind of thing. And now I'm able to start slowly uh bring some weights into it and feeling a little bit better. I'm still tender. There was a lot of muscle damage. Um, so I'm just taking it easy and which has been kind of nice to like not feel the pressure of go, 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 just relax. Your body needs to heal. Oh, I need to take a nap. Sure. I have to, it's for my healing, you know? Right. And, I, and I, I feel like this, if I, I just want to keep at it. I want to keep doing this. I want to keep like listening to my body and knowing that, you know what, I'm tired and I need to go to bed early tonight. I can't, 
stay up and do the thing, you know, whatever. And, or I can't, I don't have the energy to take on this new responsibility. Someone mm. maybe trying to throw at me and yeah. giving myself permission to just, <laughs> yeah. just, oh, and another thing was now that I can breathe, it was like, I can take a deep breath now and, and go all the way to the top and catch that, that deep breath where I, it would take me a long time of like meditating to actually get to that point. And now I can just catch it. And it feels amazing to be able to breathe again. Wow. And it's those little things that you don't notice how it's impacted the the quality Mm -hmm. of your, of your experience. Yes. And they weighed two pounds. So imagine just two pounds constantly on me here. (laughs) Your chest. I was like, wow, I cannot believe that I had this, you know, on me for so long. Yeah. And like, in a way, more metaphors we carry so much weight on our shoulders that we don't realize how much we're carrying until for me I'm pushed to the edge and I'm sick and I'm like what what is happening I'm doing all the right things yes. I'm like okay clearly I'm taking more than I should but it feels very confronting and then slowly letting that weight off and like reprogramming ourselves to not feel guilt to be more gentle with ourselves to like oh it's okay to take a nap like all those little guilts and shoulds that we are bombarded with to be able to kind of like shut them up like it's fine I know this there's no guilt (laughs) yes and and now my even my kids have gone to say mom needs this for her healing (laughs) Yeah, the lemons or whatever. Mom needs that for her healing. Yeah. Don't don't get into it. <laughs> oh, how have your family been throughout your whole process? They've been really supportive, um, helpful, and uh, mostly more like the first week when I physically couldn't do anything, and then it was like when mom was up and walking around, and she can do more because she looks like she's feeling yeah. better. But for the most part, they really have been helpful yeah, and yeah. gentle, very gentle. Mm. Honestly, I think sometimes it's easy to forget that, yes, you do a lot for your family, but your family also wants you to see you happy. They might Mm -hmm. not know what you need because nobody really knows what each of us need unless we say it out loud, but they will be supportive because they do love and care for you. And you might worry that you, you don't show up for them as much, but they're like, no, mom is happy. She's into her healing, her me time, whatever that means. They just want to just like you want to see your kids thriving, they want to see you thriving and modeling that too. Absolutely. And I think too, just having to be in bed, you know, they would come hang out with me and we would watch a show or read a book or something, you know, and, and make me food, which was really sweet. And they, I've been kind of really careful with the foods I've been consuming because I just want to heal, right? I, I didn't want to bring in foods that were going to make me feel unwell. So they they've been, um, they actually like it a little bit more because then there's like extra food for them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, they don't want the broccoli and the, <laughs> the salads or anything. So we can give it to mom. Um, but they've been sweet about it. So. Mm. Wow. I'm so touched to hear about your transformation. And I know you sharing your story of choosing yourself is also creating like a ripple effect for people listening for me for your family you're modeling them the importance of you know listening to ourselves and also showing that it's not always easy but it it is worthwhile absolutely and the concern too that I had you know oh I'm not gonna feel like a woman or you know so silly because I feel more confident in my clothes right now than I have in so long and bras are cheaper now because I can buy them in like the little girl section. <laughs> so I'm saving money and, <laughs> and I, I don't I love feel, that. I feel like it's more proportion to my thought. I mean, it, it just feels better to be like, you feel like you're in your own skin again, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your your Instagram posts, your social media posts, I think a lot of people were also resonating and having similar doubts. Yes, I've had some women reach out to say that they were wanting to get implants and that they're kind of reconsidering. And I said, please, if you feel like you need to talk to somebody, come talk to me. I've had a couple of women who were wanting to get their implants out too, didn't really know where to start. So, I mean, it's, that's where I think the women that more women that share their story and, and show that like, 
I don't have, I don't have any, I mean, I've got padding on, I have nothing here and I feel great. Welcome to the club. <laughs> I've been waiting all my life and I know they're not going to come. <laughs> it, it feels nice to just be, you know, like this is, this can be sexy too. You know, like I, being healthy is sexy. That's a cool thing to be, you know, not that I'm all the way there. Right. I don't feel all that, but I, I feel like I'm going to be more comfortable as time goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, do you have any big projects or any future endeavors you want to start diving into? Oh goodness. Well, I, I have another book that's kind of it. I, I haven't begun like the illustration or anything like that, but I have more books to come. Oh. Um, so that's fun. And I'll see how this, the, this book, and I'll just show I don't know if you can see it. yeah. my little book. <laughs> it's been so much fun. We had, had a little typo. I didn't realize it. I had sent it out to several people and one of my friends reached out and she said, Hey, do you know that there's like a little typo? And I, my heart sucked. I'm like, Oh my gosh, where? And there's a couple of them. So I oh, had, that, that happens in every single book, even my journal. I'm like, no, did I, I think I had like, feel your findings instead of feel your feelings. I'm like, oh my gosh. Shoot. And it feels so embarrassing. I had just ordered 60 copies, right? So they're sitting there in my house, all typo. And then I just thought, you know, we fixed the file. I tried to upload it to the programs that my printing program Amazon still hasn't changed it. So I'm really concerned that all the people that have pre-ordered are going to get the typo one, but I think it just is one of those lessons, right? Like it goes to the book, like things happen that you make, make a mistake and the, you can fix it and clean up your mess and just move on. So there will be a handful of copies <laughs> that people get and has a very minor typo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's part of life. I've learned to like, let go. I would beat myself over. And then I was like, it doesn't change the experience. It doesn't make things wrong. And it doesn't say anything yes. bad about yourself. So it's like, right. Okay. Cause I could feel my nervousness like, oh, like panic is like, oh. and it's like, wait, oh, breathe. <laughs> yes. You utilize those tools that you've learned. Right. Cause years ago I would have been still stressing about it. And when I think about it, I get a little anxious, but then I'm like, yeah. no, everybody makes mistakes. A friend of mine had written a novel and she's like, I had so many typos in the first edition. And I'm like, you wrote a novel. I wrote a children's book with minimal words. <laughs> <laughs> this shouldn't have happened. And, but everybody's been really sweet about it. And, and again, if you don't, if you just read it, you don't really notice, but when you see it, it's hard to, it's the only thing, that. <laughs> yeah. but it's okay. It's okay. It just adds to the story. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for some rapid fire questions? Yes. <laughs> What's the best compliment you've ever received? That one was a tough one to think about. Um, I think that I, there was a specific time um, and it all, it ends up being about being a mother kind of stuff, but <laughs> um, I was having a really stressful day and we were, I was going to take my boys out on a bike ride. And I don't remember which kid it was. It's kind of irrelevant, but I was frustrated because his tire had kind of gotten flat and he was trying to pump it. And I was already on the bike and ready. And I think I had a kid like in the seat and I couldn't just like put him down. It was very stressful. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I was getting frustrated. And then my neighbor came over very sweet. They don't live here anymore, but came over and he pumped up the tire and you're just talking and he looked at me and he said, you're a good mom and you're doing a good job. And I, I got teary eyed and I was, I, I needed to hear that in that moment. Cause I was feeling, you know, you have these moments where you do get frustrated and it's hard to be cool as a cucumber all the time. And, and you feel guilt afterwards too, but it just kind of hearing him say, say that validated, you know, you know what I am, I'm taking my kids on a bike ride. I'm doing the best that I can. And so I felt that was a good compliment. A book that's changed your life. <sighs> okay, so I have two that one was kind of like an eye opener and it's um, Chill Out and Get Healthy by Amy Rubb. And it, I, it just kind of changed my perspective on food and health. Um, and it's kind of a little bit an older book, but then The Untethered Soul. Oh. Um, Michael Singer, I have it here. Yeah, Michael Singer. Um, I feel like it's one of those books that you can read every couple of years and it has a different meaning and it's just, 
I would read it and I would get chills and I'd have to stop and I'd just have to be like in the moment. And it's a beautiful book. Mm -hmm. I think I have it here. Yeah, right here. I haven't read it for a while, but I think this is a reminder to go back to it. (laughs) Yes, it's a beautiful one. Even just to pick a few pages at a time and it's like, you just read it and you're like, yes, okay, let's do this. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, words are powerful. Words, stories, yeah. Yeah. What does coming home to yourself mean to you? It means feeling comfortable and with who I am, being able to have those full belly laughs, you know, just because you feel so good and you not, not because anything particular happened, but just because you are in the moment and um, you're just connected. You you can see a stranger and smile at them and have this connection and you can empathize and sympathize with other people going through things and just being an ear. That's, that's when I feel at home. What do you want more of? Money? No. <laughs> 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 uh, well, that's always nice, but uh, I I, I want to have more adventures. I want to go travel more um, and just more of those pause moments. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like with my kids getting older, I know there'll be a time where things aren't so chaotic, and that and we'll have my husband. And I will have those moments alone, but I would like to have more family adventures, as many as we can pack into this little time that we have left. Mm-hmm advice or words for your younger self food is not the enemy (laughs) you know that food is healing and um that everything's gonna be okay and if you could send a message to your future self five years from now (laughs) what do you want to (laughs) say that the vision you had was okay so uh, they, that the vision that I that you had years ago is all coming to light, right? Like that it's all falling into place. Yeah. And where can people find you? What you know for real estate or nutritional information or just talking about <laughs> implants life? <laughs> yeah. Um, on Instagram at Mallory K Nunes. And then um, I will, my website's not up yet because we're launching next week, but it'll be at nunasbooks.com. And the real estate website, uh, that's a great question because it's really long. I think it will just I can be... link it. <laughs> show notes, people, yes. show notes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Do you have any programs, any things that's coming out? Your book, of course, The yes. Heart That Lied. Yes. And then so future it... books. Future books to come. I I don't have title. I know what it's about. And I think it will be really helpful for people learning English, actually, which is kind of interesting because that's not what I, that wasn't the original plan, but it's, you know, about words that sound very similar or are spelled the same, but have completely different meanings. Mm -hmm. And I think that could be very helpful for people learning English. Yes, for me, I need it. (laughs) (laughs) I still need that. (laughs) (laughs) But it'll be like in a fun way, right? Like you're learning, but it's fun and it's silly. And and I love the rhyming books, so it may have rhymes. I have no idea. (laughs) Oh, I'm so excited. I love that you found that part of yourself that came from that story and you managed to find an empowering thread to not only model for your kids but also like to everyone else so I'm very grateful yes. for that <laughs> yes and I I think growing up too I was never I was never I never felt like I was smart I and and so I never thought I would write a book like that's for so like smart people but through all of this and just be just experience in life I thought you know what I'm I'm actually smart I'm smart in my own ways I might not you know I might not be doctor like a the doctor but the doctor might not know some of the things I know right like everybody has their own smart and they're good at different things and yeah <laughs> oh, amen <laughs> thank you Mallory thank you for having me 
Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect women, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.